I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Pratik Bansali, who is known as Warren Buffett of Bangalore. So let's welcome with uh, a big hands of applause to Pratik Bansali. Uh, this is Gaurav. I've had my you know chance of roller coaster and adventure last uh, almost 20 years now. What we want to do uh, today is kind of share our experience, our good, bad, ugly moments, kind of give you a uh, insight into what may help you decide better uh, future for your own self. Few things as we go along, we'll we'll come across uh, you know what's uh, very important to you, what's can be important to you and things like that. MBA is no more a college. MBA is your work life. Your work life has started. You need to get very serious in what you're going to do for the next 50 years and how you're going to influence your own life and million other lives around you. What I can start in my life which will impact me, my family, my inner circle, the friends, you all guys around here, a lot of your friends are going to be with you for the rest of your life. Okay? Everybody is going to be uh, in their own world and own track and own, own planet. But your friends are going to be always with you. But you have to start something and impact people around you. Think that. Okay? It's very important for you to think that you're not getting into placement. You're not hunting for a job. You're not going to go after you know, HP, IBM, Google, Microsoft. But why not create? Why not become from a as as our friend said, job seeker to a job creator? Okay, just keep that in mind. There are a couple of sections we want to go through. One, since we are talking entrepreneurship, uh, we we got a, a slide deck which talks about the startup ecosystem in India and Karnataka. I, I'll take probably five minutes to past uh, you know run you through the numbers so you you have an idea that you're, you're in a very very exciting time of life you you're in the right place right time with the right ecosystem at your doorstep it, it's like the button in front of you you just have to activate it okay it's the magical button for your your own life and this timing is, cannot be better uh, you know in india for you guys what do you understand when you hear the term entrepreneur? Entrepreneurship where we find uh, problems in market and give solutions. Entrepreneur is a person who creates benefit out of the needs that are present in the market. One who creates innovative idea for the existing problem in the market and creates a job opportunity. Give me one practical example. You gave a very good definition. Uh, Ritesh Agarwal started OYO Rooms before uh, India started. <laughs> Okay, Just for everybody to know, he's got a net valuation of 16,000 crores. He's the youngest billionaire in India and the entire journey has taken him only about 10 to 11 years. And SoftBank, one of the world's largest financial institution, holds about 40% stake in OYO and they're doing fantastic. And I asked him a question, what next Ritesh? I've got some beautiful pictures with him. The pictures uh, were clipped by my friend, so it portrayed me as the chief guest, as though he was talking to me, but it was the other way around. I asked him, Ritesh, what next? And he said, Pratik, this is only the uh, beginning. So that, that's the mindset. Somebody who's earned 16,000 crores at the age of 34, 35, you ask him what next, he tells you, this is only the beginning. And I want to work 16, 18 hours a day to make sure that we are across the world. Now I'll quickly tell you what entrepreneurship or business means. It's pretty simple. Uh, step one, Learn to decomplicate things. In general, there's so much of knowledge around, we tend to get confused. And uh, if, even if I have to walk from here to there, uh, I try to find ways of uh, not walking straight, but doing something extraordinary just to get there. It's not that complex. If you just have to walk from this place to that place, take the shortest route, go walk. Many times things are very simple. Business is basically about identifying a demand and a supply gap. You have a presidency college here. There's a demand for MBA seats. So they have MBA seats. If there's going to be no youngsters who will apply for the MBA, uh, they will not have so many seats. If there are say 2000 people applying and you've got 500 seats next year, the management would think let's increase 100 to 100 seats because there's a demand and supply gap. 
So any business, business is of two types. One is a product, one is a service. You either sell a product or you sell a service. And then you can have B2B, B2C or B2G. B2B is business to business, business to customer or business to the government. Now your demand and supply gap has to be identified and it has to be a profit center cost sustained model. You had some ed edtechs during COVID who started off and went up to become unicorns and billion dollar companies. And today the valuations are down by 90, 95%. Again, I will not take names, edtech companies, you all understand. A your business has to be sustained. What do you mean by sustained? It means it has to go through the global cycles of ups and downs. The global economy in general is never flat. Every 10 years you have some major downfall. You had the uh, IT bubble and then you had the COVID. These are in our terms, our, our times. Prior to that, you had various big wars in, in the Europe. You had the World War One, the World War Two. You had the Great Depression back end. So global economy in general, every 10, 15, 20 years, there's going to be a major shift. During that shift, everything that's fundamental stays. Suppose if you have a fundamental company, your stock prices from 100 will go to say 70, but you're not going to collapse. It's a matter of time, six months, one year, two years before you bounce back. But if your business model is not fundamental, uh, for example, say there are about 8,000 companies listed, uh, stock market, we'll talk towards the end, just a quick, there are about 8,000 companies listed on the Bombay Stock Exchange. India's got two stock exchanges, NSE and BSE, the National Stock Exchange and uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange. BSE is one of Asia's oldest stock exchange, NSE is the largest stock exchange. So uh, nowadays most uh, transactions and most uh, fund houses prefer to use NSE because of a lot of digitalization, but there are some old school people who still use the BSE, it's okay. What he's trying to tell you is, if you want to do something great in life, if you want to achieve something that a common person does not, then a basic 40, 45 hour week will not get you there. You have to put in the extra effort, you have to, uh, you have to give in, you know, uh, that extra time to your business, those sleepless nights. How many of you here know that uh, to import the first computer, uh, Narayan Muthi had to wait for six months uh, for the customs clearance. And uh, today, uh, the entire globe, I mean on Amazon, you can, you can order anything and in three, four, five days, you get the delivery. So all I'm trying to tell you is times have changed. India is at a very beautiful position right now. The entire United States and the West, Europe, the East, Russia, they've all almost peaked their economic curve. And my qualification to speak on the stock market is that I'm an equity investor in about 52 NSE listed companies. Uh, almost all the top uh, CIOs of the mutual fund houses, whatever apps you're running, all the bosses, uh, I'm personal friends with uh, almost all of them. I understand the markets pretty well. I read a lot of Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch books. So I'll quickly tell you how uh, things work. How many of you had DMAT, DMAT accounts? You, I think about 30, 40, 50 people of you. Just one or two quickly. What, what do you do? What do you do every day? You intraday, you leverage, you think it's a video game, you play. Hi, sir. Uh, my name is Prusha and I do have a DMAT account. I'm an equity investor. I look for long-term investments over there. I do check prices every day, which excites me as well sometimes. But I, I would like to invest because I've seen Titan price going really high. So I want to be really rich with investing with that. Stock market is not a place for entertainment. All youngsters, please understand this. I'm saying this with a lot of responsibility. I have seen people I know who have lost crores. Not just one, two, but 20, 30, 50, hundreds of crores. It's an addiction. If you do not know how to control your mind, there's an app which is going to open up every morning at 9.15 and you think it's going to make you the richest person in the world. It, it, it does not happen like that. It's, the, it's a part of the formal economy. There are companies registered on it. In the long run, I'll tell you what I do personally. I read about 50 balance sheets every month. In the long run, I invest in companies do not put all my eggs in one basket which means i would diversify i would have 40 50 60 companies try and buy at reasonable prices only invest the money that i do not need for the next 20 years i don't take money from my father or my wife or my you know relatives and invest or i don't take a loan from the bank and invest it's a perfect way to make money if you've got a long-term approach 
but if you want to make quick money, make short money, take leverage, do FNO, do derivatives, Warren Buffett, the greatest investor on earth, after 70 years of investment, says, I do not know tomorrow morning will the market open in a positive or a negative. So somebody who's been there for 70 years and has got the highest portfolio in the world does not know it. What makes you so intelligent that you're going to take the future calls and the short calls and the put calls? And the entire system is actually made to loot money from you, including the government. You, they know cigarette smoking is injurious to health, but they get lots of taxes. They know that alcohol is injurious to health, but uh, alcohol and cigarettes are among the highest product taxes that the government gets, both state and center. So you need to take care of your finances. You losing money or you winning money, the broker is going to get money, the stamp duty is going to go to the government. So just be a little careful about it. I won't get into too much detail, but just stay careful about it. And uh, it's not a route to make quick money is what I would say. What is the first step to uh, get into the stock market as maybe not a career, maybe maybe just as an investor, maybe just as a you know alternative. Do, do a lot of reading, pick up books by Peter Lynch, uh, pick up a book called Beating, Ball, Beating the Street and pick up uh, any book written by Warren Buffett and if, uh, un unless you think, okay, it's not important that you think also. You may think you know, but you, you may be an idiot. If you have to have three checkpoints of selecting a stock. I would always look at the management step one uh, because any company, uh, any institution is headed by a group of people. The, the chairman, the CEO, the MD, so uh, the, the, the board of directors. So how clean, what clean record, track record of the management is, what value systems the management brings, one. Second, I would look at the past performance, the last five, 10 years of their balance sheets. The, if you're able to read the balance sheets, it gives you a, a lot of things. Third, I would look at the field they are in, the sector they are in, what kind of competition they have around, and uh, what the future in India for that sector would look like. Personal traits. A lot of patience. You need to be smart, you need to understand that Rome was not built in a day. Out of 100 people, there's that one person who always clicks. But youngsters need to understand that if you only look at that one person, you look at, a, say, a Rakesh Junjunwala or a Anand Kedi or something, every house does not produce a Rakesh Junjunwala. And what comes out in the media is not what actually happens. Lots of things have happened. So COVID tell you how it was. So how did you face that COVID? So when your uh, portfolio goes down, you don't feel good, sir. Yes. That is right. But you, don't, you, don't, you don't feel good, but yes. yes. So did you withdraw the money or? Uh, no, sir. Did I did not say anything, sir. Uh, I have a very different uh, take in life. Uh, yeah. Even Kalpen Shahji was telling me that somebody at your age, if you've got this mindset, you're an alien. He said, I meet thousands of people every month uh, because I've got branches across the country and uh, we manage a portfolio of two like crores. Uh, I take it as a compliment and he said you're an alien, he said you don't trade, you don't do intraday, you don't do derivatives, you don't do FNO, uh, you only invest in Nifty 500 companies, uh, your life is so boring, but I know that you're going to make a hell lot of money because your life is boring. So I, I, I kind of understand that good things take time and making money is boring. Every 10, 12, 15 years there are going to be some glitches in global economy, India being a part of the globe. We will be affected. It's not that we are alien. And uh, just small things, uh, some state elections, the market started. Today we are at an all-time high. And again, if something goes wrong or some, some other thing happens, you never know, there's a flu in China. So the last 10, 15 days, there are news that the flu is, uh, lots of European countries are uh, screened, not giving Chinese open visas, etc. So that's uh, the Israel-Palestine issue happened, market tanked. So you need to understand that every now and then something's going to happen. So if you're a long-term investor, if your horizon is about 5 years, 10 years, and you don't need that money, and the stock you bought is a good quality stock, I would not even call it a stock, it's a part of the company ownership that you're taking. So if you've got good companies, they are bound to come back. Because the Israel-Hamas effect did not affect Infosys or TCS. Their orders are in fact, they are working. But global sentiments and FIIs pull out, there are lots of other issues. And in the short run, markets are manipulated, sir. There are these big short people sitting in Mumbai who do it. But in the long run, the price has to come to the actual valuation of the company. So if you're a long-term investor, it's the choice you make between getting from the 99% to the 1%. Less than 1% of the global population holds about 70% of the wealth and control about 75% of the GDP of the globe. The same case with India. 
Less than 1% of India's population is controlling 75% of India's wealth. The reason is, the entire globe has become a capitalist society. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I don't know that because I did not make it. The other 99% people, like all of us, including me, we've always been kept busy in our daily routine work. You have to come to work. The metro, there's traffic. Some signal you can meet Mr. Gaurav Punjabi and you can discuss the startup. And by the time you reach the, you reach the last signal, you can uh, sell your equity and get out. So uh, people from outside the states don't blame Bangalore traffic. We on purpose are very smart and we have this traffic. That's why we are the startup capital of the world. I slept six months on my factory floor in 2010-11. For six months I used to come home only on Sundays. Sleep on the floor. Because the factory was new, the labors were new. We had to make sure that the production is happening right. I can't have production engineers everywhere because I have no money. I'm just a startup. Uh, my cousin, my uncles, they used to come home and Tera beta to gaya, wo idam pagal ho gaya hai. Uska kuch bhi nahi hoga. Now that same uncle has come back from US and he's saying, my son has completed his MBA somewhere, Harvard, this, that, some college. He wants to start up, please help him. I'm like, uncle, mere se to kuch nahi hoga. So, there are lots of challenges. Your family, your immediate people are going to put you down. You need to be thick-skinned. It's only your dream and your passion that you need to keep following and keep learning. Uh, one, one more important thing, sometimes we get too passionate with our product. We build a product or a service, we say, no, this is the best product. It doesn't happen like that. Don't love your product. Because the market is not going to buy your product just because you love it. You think that you've got the best product in the world. But the customer, the end user has to like your product. He has to find, he or she has to find some value. Why would anybody buy a product? How many of you here use an Apple iPhone? All of, most of you? Now see, what Apple does is, it tells you that we've got the best technology in the world, which is faster than other phones. It's more reliable. The data is more secure. The camera quality is better. The sound is better. Apart from all this, because they're doing this year after year, they've created a brand image inside your head that if you don't have an Apple phone, you're missing out of something in life. And that's why you pay that extra 30, 40, 50,000 rupees for that phone. Because if it was so simple to make an Apple phone, there would have been about 100 companies in the world making phones like Apple. But there's just one Apple today. So if, if, you, if you build your product so beautifully and you keep innovating it, with time, you get to a place where you command a brand value and your profit source, people are willing to pay that extra amount for your product. Uh, every now and then I see these traders making money and uh, I recently heard news that Priya Sundar makes money around 2 crores an annum. I'm not sure if you remember. So I get tempted and I would want to make such money a short, short span of time. What advice would you give to someone who thinks like I am the wrong person. If you want quick money and short money, I don't know how to make it. I only know how to make wealth uh, over decades, slow and steady, 10, 12, 15% a year. I don't gamble and I really have no clue. But all I can say is if you're an investor and not a trader, in the end, you'll have lots of, uh, you'll, you, 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 you'll sleep well, you will not have anxiousness, your pressure is going to be normal. And uh, I'll confess, I really have no idea of how trading works. See, the point is, y'all are reading on Facebook, Twitter, it's a hearsay. Somebody told me, you know, that's why you're investing or somebody told me that's why I'm moving in this direction. Please don't do that. You should have your own, you know, personal experience with the subject or the product or the line that you're taking. Elon Musk is lining up behind state governments and trying to finalize a Tesla manufacturing project in India. Indian response is, unless you set up about 150 factories for other co-vendors and unless you buy, uh, say buy the tires and buy the glass and buy uh, the parts, uh, there are about 2000 parts that go into an automobile industry, so about 200 to 50 industries have to support making of a vehicle. Unless you buy about 70% of the parts from Indian manufacturers, uh, we will not let you in. And he has agreed to, uh, to do that. So now I think there are three states, uh, front runner states. Uh, there's Tamil Nadu, there's Karnataka, there's also uh, Gujarat, which is negotiating initial stages with him to set up Tesla's first factory in India. Now, anybody, do you know why Tesla wants to set up a factory in India? 
market. Market. We we we've, we've got one of the largest domestic consumption markets in the world, and our per capita income is growing. So where can development happen? Can something that is already developed develop further? No. The the, the growth limits. That's why I say that the U.S. and the West have already peaked the economic cycle, and uh, somewhere where say the per capita income is uh, uh, is say a hundred thousand dollars, it it cannot go up to five hundred thousand dollars quickly. But in a country like India, when the per capita income is say twelve thousand rupees or eighteen thousand rupees or twenty two thousand rupees, this has got a long scope of growth. Harley Davidson uh, X440. Did any one of you test right? The X440 launched three months ago. Harley Davidson is a US-based company which makes, we all know about the legendary bikes they make. Till today, all the bikes were designed and made in the US or in China and only imported to India as a completely built unit. And that's why they, they had 100, 150, 200% of taxes and the bikes would cost about 15, 20, 25, 30 lakh rupees. Uh, last two years ago, they collaborated with Hero which is India's largest uh, two-wheeler manufacturer. And after the R&D team, they launched X440, which is the first Harley Davidson in the world that is made in India with the Indian partner, with Indian parts for Indian consumer. And costs only about 3 lakh 40,000 rupees. And the phase one of booking is already closed because they've, uh, they've got about 30, 32,000 bookings in a week. So the first phase of manufacturing is already completed. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, the world is looking at India. Or else these big multinational companies who till today thought we were a third world country, when you took an Indian passport and when you went to the US, yeah, people would look down on you. And today when you travel with the Indian passport, they know that you come from a country which has got a $4 trillion economy. We are the fourth largest economy in the world. And if, if we go by what the growth earnings suggest and what Sri Mukesh Ambani said a few days ago, he thinks in his lifetime India is going to become a $40 trillion economy. We, we, we would be the world's second largest economy. India is growing. Life is 90% hard work and 10% of luck. Some people may say, no, he's lucky. Are he's talking all big, big things. His father must be. It's not like that. When that 10% of luck is come, we don't know. I'll give you a small instance. We were making a warehouse five years ago with a five crore loan taken from a bank. I was just making a warehouse. I was getting it prepared. It took me two years. One Sunday afternoon, suddenly a gentleman walks in. He's looking at the warehouse. I'm curious. I, say, uh, I go and introduce myself. I say, sir, hello, I'm Pratik Mansali. I'm uh, the owner of this warehouse. And he very humbly says, hi, I'm Shailendra Sharma. I'm the chairman of Kanti Sweets Private Limited. Very simply dressed, soft-spoken. And uh, then he says, I have a factory in the Wind City. We were looking for a packaging depot. And my uh, team has visited your place a few times. Please meet me at Sheraton for a cup of coffee. And the next evening I went, this happened in 2018. The next evening I went to uh, Orion Mall, the Sheraton Hotel, to have a cup of coffee. For two hours in the meeting, he was only telling me what Sri Krishna told Arjun in the Mahabharata. Actually, he was telling me what was written in the Vedas. He was quoting some religious book from uh, from an Imam, and he. I was little. I thought he's called me for a meeting. He's seen my warehouse. I have told everybody that yes, my warehouse will be rented today. What is going on? And then towards the end of the meeting, at the end of two two hours after we finished everything. He said, Pratik, I like your warehouse, you can quote the price, and I trust you, whatever price you say, we'll find less. He wanted to buy up the warehouse. Now, you see how these big people work. They give you responsibility of fixing the price for your warehouse. I'm, I'm in a confused state. I, I started calculating land cost, 2 crore, building cost, 3 crore, this, that. I said, cost what, 5 crores? Should I ask for 10 crores? No, should I ask for 9 crores, is it less? Then I, after 5-10 minutes, made a few phone calls to my father and everybody. I said, it should be around 10. And then he did not bargain. He said, okay, no. And today, it's been 6 years, 5 years. And uh, we are doing the 5th mega factory for him. And he tells me that uh, I treat you like a younger brother, not because of your business acumen, but 
because of your value systems and your honesty. So he said two things to me, which I will never forget. He tells me, uh, if you want to grow in life, always do the right things even when nobody is watching. When people are watching, when the professors are around, you pretend to be disciplined. When, when your father or the mother walks into the room, you pretend to switch off the bumble or the tinder and do something else. Do the right things when nobody is watching. Because you're not doing the right things to please somebody, not to please your faculty or the dean or the principal. You're doing the right things because you want to grow in life. So if you make a habit of doing the right things, one small way of inculcating this habit is, tell me who your five best friends are and I'll tell you who you are. The group with which you move around, the group with which you spend your maximum time. If they are only talking about Macha, let's go have cigarette here, let's go have non-veg, veg, non-veg, whatever, let's go party. Then your mindset, your wavelength, your frequency is only going to be about all that. You will never be able to see beyond. And if you have intellectual people who tell you about how to grow, what new technology is happening in the world, what problems, presidency college, all around, all of you need to go have food. So do you observe how many restaurants around? Do you see a demand and supply gap and you see that, okay, four of us get together, we have a startup and let's open a restaurant or let's deliver food to the PGs, let's open a PG. Try and observe where there's a demand and supply gap. Can you have a small model as students where you can fix the demand and supply gap? Can you have a small cloud kitchen where you serve food at say 100 rupees a packet to say 500 people, you make 50,000 rupees a month so that you don't have to take that money from your parents? So start thinking on those terms. One. Second, what Mr. Sharma told me is, uh, always speak the truth, but not all truth needs to be spoken. Because we live in a very strange world. You may say, you may say something which may hurt somebody who is influential, which may not be as per his or her thought process, and then you get uh, caught with your tail. So, uh, there are lots of things around us. Could be political things, could be religious things, could be somebody powerful. Uh, don't try and become that revolt or that rebellious person trying to fix everything. I, I would suggest personally. I want your point of view on that. On what basis like the investment of the gold and the natural resources assets are found and what uh, like how it's going to be and what is its uh, invest and your investment patterns and uh, your investment uh, Got it. Got it. Okay. I'll very humbly tell you my things that I personally do because I cannot tell you what the world does or what, what is right, what will go up, what will go down, I really don't know. What I do, I can share with you. Before that, uh, what is crypto? What is Bitcoin? What is Dogecoin? What does it do? Quickly, can you tell me? Uh, Anybody else can also join. What is crypto? Encrypted currency, sir. Does it uh, make buildings? Does it run a software company? Does it give you some service? It is invisible money. Like. Invisible money. Yeah. Which country is crypto registered in? Crypto is the uh, US. Yeah. Anybody else? Crypto is unregistered. You don't know who owns crypto. You don't know which country it's coming from. It is not registered with any tax authorities of the world. I stick my neck out even on RBI events with directors of companies to tell you crypto is going to be the biggest scam mankind has ever seen. Please don't fall for such scams. No, no, not actually crypto, I'm talking like I'm stressing over the gold. On crypto, yes. Uh, gold and other natural uh, commodities which are uh, natural resources. Yes, about 20% of my investment goes into gold and real estate because I'm in a construction company. So if you look at my entire portfolio, say about 45-50% of it is into equities and the rest is into commodities, working capital of current business and gold. So you need to have a mix of everything so that uh, you're a little safe. But if your equi equity market investment is in good companies, you don't have to worry. Don't worry. Reserve Bank of India, it prints the rupee note. How does an RBI print currency? Do you know what logic do we follow? Suppose we have to print uh, 1 lakh crore rupees of currency. The RBI buys 1 lakh crore rupees of gold from world markets. It is stored that gold physically in the world. The total amount of currency, the notes, the currency, Indian currency, Indian rupee, Suppose whatever the figure is, 20 lakh crore, 25 lakh crore, 30 lakh crore. RBI has that much amount of gold in tons physically with it. So the Indian sovereign system of our central bank works on issuing currency against purchase of gold. When the fourth largest economy in the world is running on the mechanism of gold, 
it uh, it's a direct indication that gold and silver are very stable uh, instruments of uh, generating wealth and keep preserving wealth. So it's not going to lose its value quickly because uh, the entire Indian economy runs on that. So do some major other countries of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and lecturers, uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm Madhumita from uh, second year. So today I'm going to uh, I'm delighted to present my business idea in front of you guys. So the inception of my business involves zero investment actually. So my business is all about uh, pure Kanchipuram silk sarees. It basically started with that. So I have customers from both uh, in India as well as international. So I've sold many sarees to international customers who are from UK, Australia, uh, Mauritius, Singapore, Malaysia. So I've sold about 500 sarees from the year 2021. But I started the business at 2020 during COVID. Uh, it took me one whole year to collect customers and get my first order in uh, October 2021. Uh, so after posting the customer review, uh, her payment details online, I started getting uh, more orders. And uh, now I've sold about 500 sarees and I've made a profit of around 350,000 rupees. The unique selling point is, for example, if you go visit a store, every customer will ask for one particular sari. They open it, fold it again, open it, fold it again. There are so many damage issues, dust issues, and they might sometimes sell you old stock. So we actually provide saris directly from weavers to the customers. Only weavers will be touching the sari, and the courier person will be touching the sari. Nobody else. You are already sitting on a gold mine. And your sari is also called gold, 2 grams, 3 grams, 5 grams. Okay, Madhu Mehta, uh, all the professors, everybody here, you, it's important to inspire. And I'm a paka manufacturing defect. I really don't care what the world thinks about me, as long as what I do gives me good sleep. Uh, very humbly, uh, I'm giving her a small uh, token of 5,100 rupees, uh, just to inspire her, uh, her being brave and bold of what she's doing. And uh, I'm inviting her to come to my office with the entire project report. And, uh, a, 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 and all the details of the business. And if she's looking at any seed investment, uh, I'll be the first one to invest her venture. Thank you. Don't look at the world. The world will smile at you. You have to do well. You never know tomorrow, Madhumita may, may, may become the Manish Manotra from KDM. That's how you have to inspire youngsters. <laughs>